In the city of Madurai, which is often called as the temple city in Tamil Nadu in South India, a few years ago a big evangelistic campaign was organized. In order to advertise this event, the organizers went on an advertising blitz. So they went and wrote across the walls in the city these words. They wrote, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Overnight, some perceptive people uh, from other faith communities, they came and they wrote underneath this statement. What is the question? What is the question? All over the world, people are asking this. What is the question? In order to understand the questions properly of the people, we need to understand them better. Too often, if we don't understand the question they are asking, too often we end up answering the questions which they are not asking or not answering the question which they are truly asking. So it's so important for us to understand the question that the people are asking. In order to do that, we need to know the context of the people. We need to know the people better and their worldviews. So it's very important to understand the times that we live in and serve appropriately. Remember, that's what Mordecai would tell Esther and he was asking Esther to go and speak to the king on behalf of her people. He said that, Esther, you have come to this position for such a time as this. In other words, Mordecai was trying to tell Esther that God has placed her and raised her for such a time as this and that Esther would understand the times and act accordingly. In the book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles in chapter 12, we read about the men of Issachar. It says that these men knew what Israel should do in that particular time. They understood the times and they interpreted it for it, the people, for their own people and how they must do. And then as you look at even Jesus' great statement in Luke chapter 12, he looked at the people and said, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky and the earth. How come you are not able to interpret this present time? In other words, Jesus was telling the very Messiah you've been waiting all these years is standing right in front of you. But you are not able to understand or interpret the present time. So as followers of Jesus, it's very important that we understand the times we live in. We understand the people and the context that they live in so that we can engage them appropriately. So this, uh, I want to briefly talk to you about this particular context, the global context that is, con that is currently being uh, evolved, is emerging, and the role for us and how we can engage them appropriately. Generally, I call this period as the third wave of missions, third wave of missions, particularly Protestant missions. If you look at the Protestant mission, we can think of these Protestant missions as three waves. Remember, wave is a good analogy used by many scholars and historians to periodize and to help us to understand large chunks of periods of time. And so a wave is not a watertight compartment, but you know you could see the overlap from one period to another. So that's why I thought I'll use the word wave as an analogy to periodize these or understand this almost 300 or 350 years of Protestant missions. The first wave was started way back in 1706 when a man by name Bartholomew Ziegenbalk, he came to India to my own people, Tamil people, and he served among us. And uh, that's the uh, start of the Protestant mission. It went on for almost 200 years, particularly during the heydays of the colonial period. Hundreds and hundreds of missionaries, thousands of missionaries went out of the Western world all across the world, which we today call as the Global South. And they invested their lives, many sacrificing themselves for the proclamation of the gospel. It went on for more than 200 years. And then around in the early part of the 20th century, particularly with the rise of the first and then later the second world war, followed by the collapse of the colonial empire across the world, 
a new wave had emerged. The second wave of missions had emerged. For instance, in my country, India, when India got its independence in 1947, due to various reasons, slowly the foreign missionaries were phased out of India. So then the question happened was, how would now the church survive when the missionaries go out? But remember, this is Missio Dei, which means God's mission, and it will continue on. That is our confidence. That's where our hope is. So what God did was he raised cross-cultural Indian missionaries, many from South India, my place, who went as cross-cultural workers to North India to proclaim the gospel. It went on for another like 40, 50 years as we see many, many new communities of faith were formed during that period. And then by the late 1980s and 90s, a new phenomenon had emerged, the opening up of the Indian economy and globalization. The impact of globalization that is happening not only in my country but all over the world, that has opened up a new wave of missions, which could be termed as the third wave of mission. So if you think of the first wave of mission primarily during uh, the colonial era and the second wave is more of a post-colonial era, the third wave is more of a global era. And we are in that third wave of mission. And now the question is like how is being the world is being shaped during this era and how are we going to engage it appropriately? There are ways of understanding this era, but I want to quickly speak about five important uh, themes that define this third wave. The first one is what I call that this era, or this wave could be called as an era of global complex connectivity, meaning there is an increased amount of global connectivity happening between the global and the local world that is shaping not only the world as we know of, but also uh, I've been shaping the Christian missions as well. There has been an increase in shorter missions and, uh, and, and uh, a reduction in the number of career missionaries. But due to ease of travel and technology, new forms of missions are emerging all the more in this new era and new ways of partnering with one another between the global north and the global south is emerging as well. So this is an era of uh, local complex connectivity. Secondly, this is also an era of heightened cultural sensitivity. As we see that the world is in some sense becoming more and more westernized, our western cultures being spread more in more places, there is also forces that are acting against it and there is a renewed uh, call for cultural sensitivity or going back to our roots and to find out who we are. So this going, so this fresh emphasis on cultural local identity is also emerging during this time. That's why again mission has to be very culturally appropriate and sensitive during this era. The, the third theme that defines this period is what I call as an e era of exciting gospel receptivity. God has been moving in fresh new ways just like you know, as, as many scholars and historians are saying that, you know, the first decade of the 20th century with the Azusa Street Revival spawning new movements that resulted in the Pentecostal and the charismatic movements around the world. New movements are being spawned in the first century, the first decade of the 20th century, 21st century, and how people are being drawn to Christ, what we often call as Christward movements that's happening across the world. So the Lord is working in fresh new ways across the world in this era, in this third wave of mission. So, the, But the challenge is, how do we understand these new movements? How do we facilitate them? How do we disciple them? So those are the challenges that are in front of us. The fourth theme of this third wave that is emerging is that this is an era of alarming religious animosity. All over the world we are seeing the rise of fundamentalism almost in every religion and the attack on the church. So more and more incidences of persecutions are increasing. So this wave also forces us to think, how do we act? How do we act and serve in a way, in a particularly more and more environment that are hostile to us? So that is another missional challenge that is emerging during this era. And the last theme, uh, which I would call as, and this is uh, an era 
of uh, widening economic disparity. Even as the world is becoming more and more connected, but uh, we see that you know the rich getting richer and the poor becoming poorer, and this widening disparity is so visible. So the question again and the challenge again is how does the church would stand in this gap of widening disparity and show the love of Jesus Christ? How can we holistically engage with the world with the love and compassion of Jesus Christ that is becoming more and more increasingly needed in this world? So this is an era that is very complex, that is emerging. There are so many issues, there are so many controversies, there are so many threats. But at the same time, this is also an exciting era of the spirit moving in fresh new ways and enabling us to understand and to engage with the world in a meaningful way. So we need to understand the times we live in as well as understand the people and the context that they live in so that we can serve the world better. <music>